welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on Give No Place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy File. The enemy has zero authority in your life. He has no legal right to any area of your life. All he takes is what you give him. Because you are the, in the place of authority. Many Christians don't know that and maybe never heard that. Or if they have, they don't believe it. But it is that way. I want you to say, thank God for the word. Oh, say it like you believe it. Thank God for the word. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 is kind of our foundation scripture. I wanted to uh, jot your memory on this one. Verse 26 says, be angry. Well, isn't that interesting? It's a command to be angry. And do not sin. That's interesting. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So anger and wrath are mentioned twice there. And then it says, verse 27, nor give place to the devil. There are a couple things I want to look at here today. Number one, write this down. There is an anger that is not sinful. You've got to know that because the Bible tells you in your New Testament to be angry but don't sin, meaning there is an anger that you're actually commanded to have that's not sinful. And I said, well, before I move on and go to the next example that I have in the Bible, I want to I want to back up and talk about this for just a minute. What does that look like? Well, this is an anger that's rooted in loving what God loves and hating what God hates. Did you get this? Once you say, Jesus, be my Lord, and he saves your life, he's your Savior and your Lord, at that point, you've got to learn then what he loves and learn what he hates, and you follow him. You remember the scripture in John 10, 27 says, my sheep know my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. The fact that he's your Lord, that he's your shepherd, that you're his sheep, you have a lifelong project called following that's ahead of you. Yeah. I know I can say that in Texas and fit right in. Yeah. It doesn't get us jazzed. It doesn't make us scoot all the chairs back and run in this place. Why? Because following is a demand on your life. Now, sheep like to follow. So, you know, I'm an under-shepherd based on the authority of Jesus Christ, the pastor of this church, the set man here. So here's what happens. I get to, in this congregation, in this flock, help the sheep pop pebbles out of their hooves. When you're living life, you just sometimes step on the, and you come in with a limp. I'm here to help you with that. I wish I'd have given them the picture because on the property where I live, I found um, a little tool that fixes hooves. I sent it to my pastor. I said, look at this. It's a pointy object. I was holding it. Man, I wish I had that picture because it would really help you understand what my role is. I said, no wonder people run away from me. They see me with the pebble popper coming. <laughs> They'd rather have the limp than get that <laughs> popped right out. Because that sucker, it's a piece of metal. It's like that long. There's a little tool you hold and you, you stick it in there. <laughs> I like making that noise. You should like it too because then you can walk free. You see, a lot of people want to find a church where nothing ever, ever, they're live. Nothing ever ha makes that sound because they don't get close enough for an anointed pastor to pop that pebble. <laughs> they get angry in the wrong way. See, there's an anger that's not sinful and there's an anger that is sinful. So, once you come in, see, you got to do it God's way. Sheep like to follow. That's how I got off on this. So, if God says uh, in his word, you know, whatever it is he touches, that this is husbands, how you should love your wives. Um, mom and dad, this is how you should train your children. Well, your ears are up to that. And if, if that's not happening and that's a pebble in your walk, you need somebody to come and just <laughs> it right out. Mom <laughs> is about to be busted. It's the last time I'm doing that today. Hopefully. What am I saying? If something makes God angry and you're following God, it should make you angry. <laughs> right? So he's the leader. 
He's the shepherd, you're the sheep, and you're following him. And he says, I detest that. That makes me angry. Or if you read a story of someone like Korah in the Bible, who decided, I don't know who Moses thinks he is, but we all have God with us. We're Israelites. And he had that reduction thing that's happening right now to the Word of God and to churches all across America and the world. He reduced down God's anointed to his level. Now get this. God said, Korah and all of the guys with you and all of your families and every part of your life, the ground opened up and swallowed them straight to hell. Question. Does any man have that power? Answer, no. Does God have that power? Yeah. So what does that tell you? That ticked God off. So why would you sit up in church and operate with that same spirit and think God's good with it because Jesus shed his blood? It's all good now. No, no, no. Mark made me think of that scripture in Hebrews 10. Jot it down. Hebrews 10. I'm going to read it to you here. I don't have it on the screen. But, man, I just couldn't shake this. And then all of our songs were right around it. If you didn't catch what he's talking about, being confirmed, as you do this, you get more fixed, more established, more confirmed. But he talked about this, and I'm just going to reiterate because this is by the Holy Spirit. If you count it a common thing to tithe, it's because up the stream you're counting the blood of Jesus as a common thing. As he says right here in verse 29 of Hebrews 10, Of how much worse punishment, and he is the Holy Spirit I'm talking about that says this. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy of who has trampled the Son of God underfoot and counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing? Man, as soon as you said that, Mark, about it's common, that verse just was, I almost wanted to come up and grab the mic. I thought, no, no, if that's of the Holy Ghost, I'll think about it when I'm up there preaching. I just thought about it. Don't. Take these precious truths and count them as common. Don't take this word of God, well, it's just the word. Worship is just worship. Church is just church. That's taking it as common. And this says, uh, how much worse punishment do you think he's going to be thought worthy of? Who, who tramples the Son of God underfoot and counts the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insults the Spirit of grace. So people have this idea, well, grace covers all that. Not if you're insulting it. The Spirit of grace can be insulted, and the Holy Spirit himself can be offended. In fact, there's one scripture that says he can be outraged. Outraged. Now, if you keep down that path, eventually you'll blaspheme him. That's why you've got to have somebody stop you along the way that loves you enough and says, hold on, I'm not trying to make you mad, but you need a wake-up call. So here's the whole point to this. If you don't hate what he hates, then you just think, well, God's just common. No, he's your shepherd. He's your savior. He's your deliverer. He's your rock of safety. Hey, he's everything to you. You need him more than you need air. (laughs) I mean, we need him and we need him bad. I know that's simple, but we got to get this. We got to live this way. So this anger that's not sinful is based on what God said. If it makes God angry, how do you feel about it? See, this is the problem society starts to wear on you. It's called the vexing of the soul. Lot experienced it, and it's recorded in detail in the Bible. And it says, Lot vexed his soul by what he heard and saw day after day. The United States of America is not too far from Sodom. See, the difference in Sodom, they didn't have a Bible. America does. It was founded on it. So there's a difference. There's no excuse. When you look and you see that cities were destroyed because of the sin of sodomy. And you see we just came out of a month where the whole America and anyone that's in any kind of corporate position would tell you that their corporation celebrates exactly the thing that angers God. How can you say you follow God, but what angers Him, you're lukewarm about Now see, when we do follow the Lord, and we see in His Word, not what people's opinions are, in the Word that's been tested, tried, and true, that's been here before you were here, will be here after you're gone, 
The word that is eternal, this word right here, when we read that something makes God angry, it should make us angry and it should bother us if it doesn't. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. The anger that's not sinful is actually based in love. This is what's shocking. When you love someone, it will cause anger if someone else tries to hurt that person. Take my children for illustration, you know. We just took them across the country, and we went to the Holy Spirit Conference, and then we did some fun things together, like going to the beach. That was a lot of fun. And I had my eye on them all the time. And it's not as enjoyable. I saw someone had made a, a post. My wife showed it to me, and I laughed out loud. You know, no adult really goes on vacation. You just take all your kids and go somewhere else at work. That's basically what this came down to. Because even on the beach, as much as I like it, now I've got six of them running around. I'm just watching all the time. i got to keep my eye on them. Why? Because I love them. When we make a stop uh, somewhere to get gas or something like that, I'm like, don't be alone. Why? I'm not going to let someone else come harm them because I love. And if someone tried to, it would stir up anger in me. Do you see that? So this is what you have to understand about this. Uh, people say, I don't get that. I, where's the love in that? Well, let me tell you what the real love looks like. And, and this is something you've heard if you've been here before. But this has to be a staple in your life. Romans 12.9. Everybody say Romans 12.9. You got to know this like you know your name. Let love be without hypocrisy. Somebody said, well, you need to look at the italicized words that were added by the translators. Okay, then I'm going to read it that way. Love without hypocrisy. It's the same thing, right? Pretty more straightforward, actually. And here it tells us how to do that. Abhor what is evil. Do what? Do what? Abhor? That's not a common word we use now, is it? Abhor. I abhor that. You know what it means? Detest. So when you stop and break down what does detest mean, something made you angry about that. You detest it. Now, I know there's at least two guys in here that if we were to get a blender and blend some garlic in there, they will detest it. I talked to Reese about it. I hadn't talked to Nick about it yet. I noticed he was chewing a whole pack of gum after that, trying to get rid of that taste. But I know, when I talked to Reese about it, I said, man, I felt for you, brother. I was sitting on this front row. I was just like, oh, man, I could smell the garlic. I was sitting where Andy's sitting. And they were blending it over here. Woo, aren't you glad we don't do that in main service? <laughs> you know what else hit me? Because I thought, how come, you, you know, I'm sure there's other churches, hopefully, in our area that do things like this for young people. I'm not aware of camp in the city or something like this. Um, but I thought one reason a lot of churches don't do that is the whole church's youth service. Like, you come and it's the light show, it's all that, you know, that's, that's service. But I'm talking to some adults up in here, right? And we're not going to leave the young people out. They're sitting here too. We love them. We have youth service. I mean, you don't want to miss it. We have that every year, camp in the city. It's a lot of fun. But my whole point is I, I got to thinking the reason a lot of churches, they don't do a youth re outreach is because the church itself is youth service. Maybe on steroids a little bit, but that's about what it is. Come watch our light show. Well, you should have come to the youth camp if you want to see our light show. We ain't scared to spend money on lives. That's great. But you know, that's not really, a, that's not the draw. The draw is the presence of the Lord. Now, let me just tell you something. Love is what makes faith work. Faith is what makes the kingdom work. So you got to have love right. So you got to have this as a staple. Romans 12, 9. Say Romans 12, 9. Don't ever forget this. Let love be without hypocrisy. King James says dissimulation. The actual definition, one definition is hypocrisy, but here's what it actually means, the real thing. Let it be genuine. That's the real definition of it. Let it be genuine. Genuine love, this is agape, the God kind of love, not brotherly love or love you have for your wife, uh, husbands. It's not that. This is the God kind of love has this in it, abhorrence, detesting. You could write this in your notes, anger. 
but not the kind where you're angry, angry and wanting your way. It's a godly thing. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. So notice this and just take note. Love is not genuine if detesting evil is not a part of it. You got that? So it should make you angry when perverts push their agendas. That should make you angry. And you don't necessarily get angry at the people. You're angry at the demonic spirits that are behind that. Which is why I'm thankful once again for our founding fathers who were angry at tyranny. If you're a Christian, you should be against tyranny, period. Amen. They stood for freedom. Write this down. Hopefully this will help you. Then we're going to move on today. A righteous anger will oppose evil, not make a place for it. This is the best way you can tell if your anger's right or not. Let me just tell you this. If it's just a thing about your feelings got hurt, then it's not a righteous anger. Anytime your feelings are screaming, it hurts my feelings that you did that. I'm just, I just want you to know that. That's not what this righteous anger is based on. It may or may not hurt your feelings. It really don't have much to do with you. It has to do with your leader, your shepherd. Boy, it's, quiet. it's so quiet in here because we have to think, what? See, we think that we can get angry because what we think is something that's in unjust, but it has to be according to the Bible. What you have to know is this. Almost all kinds of anger that people are driven with now make a place for the devil to attach to their life. But a righteous anger opposes evil. It opposes evil. That's what it does. And it can't be you deciding you're going to take this up a notch and, and having your skewed view of judgment on it. There's a, probably another side to the story when your feelings got hurt, by the way. But just remember this, a righteous anger will oppose evil, not make a place for it. So there is an anger that's not sinful. However, the second thing I want us to look at from Ephesians 4 is this, number two. Anger unchecked gives a place to Satan. And I'll tell you this. When you have a righteous anger and there's not much you can do about it, personally, you need to pray until you get that thing released. Why? Because even a righteous anger that just stays on the inside of you, unchecked, will eventually give a place to Satan in your life because it will change everything about your life. You see, those that are in faith, they have a rest to them. They have a peace that's supernatural, a peace that passes understanding, your New Testament says. So you think about that's written to a church where people could relate to people they knew being lit on fire as a lamppost, doused with oil, lit on fire, burned alive for their Christianity as a lamppost. So they would read that and they say, I have peace that passes understanding. <laughs> Folks, that's on a level we have never experienced as an American. But I can tell you right now, the persecution's coming. That's not fun news to hear about. But, you know, if you can't take people's opinion of you, people writing things uh, against you, if you can't take that, how are you going to take it when they say, you're getting your head lopped off if you keep standing for God? Now, hopefully, you'll listen to righteous preaching that warns you to get right with God now and not wait till later because there's an event that's going to happen very soon. Everything is aligned. It's ready to go. It's called the rapture of the church, and you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss the catching away. You don't want to meet. Excuse me. You don't want to miss the meeting in the air. You don't want to miss it because the Antichrist is going to be full of the devil like no man ever has been. Whew, I'm telling you, man. And he's going to be angry. He's going to have his hands full. Go read Revelation. You'll find out he gets angry. <laughs> well, we looked at Cain. Let's, let's, let's scale it back from the Antichrist since you're not him. And let's talk about Cain that the New Testament warns us about several times. This is what we looked at two weeks ago. And the, it's so interesting that the Lord himself told Cain, sin lies at the door. Now, he got angry because God rejected his offering, and God spoke to him in that anger. 
and said, sin lies at the door, giving us great insight straight from God to humans. When, you're, when you get angry, sin all of a sudden goes to crouch and it's ready to launch. And if it goes unchecked, you will get into sin. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. I've watched it as a pastor. There will be people that are good, blue ribbon sheep right here. I mean, they're sheep with blue ribbons. Man, I'm telling you, they're like, they would take the cake. They're wool shining and everything. But they get distracted by someone else. And then they go stir up the water. That's goat behavior. Please stop before pastor has to say, hold up, goat. What are you doing? Now, I've been instructed to milk the goats, so I'll still milk you. Because <laughs> you still got to give. But I tell you that, I'll tell you one thing right now. You don't want to be a goat because goats go to hell. See, goats, I went back and read my pastor's book on sheep, wolves, and goats. I found it really interesting. Sheep love calm water. Goats, every time, and I'm telling you, it's so funny to be pastor, the perspective you get on this. Goats like to go and ripple the water. A sheep will be down there, and one of them might just accidentally slip, and, it, and he hadn't got that pebble out yet. Pastor hadn't got to him yet. But see, this other person thinks they're a sheep, but all of a sudden they're rippling the water. They're like, uh-oh, there goes, there goes a slip. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. I just wish, I wish people would understand sheep like the green pasture. They love to come to church. They don't miss church. They love being at church. They love the feeding. And so if you don't like that, then you should say, oh, no. Am I a goat? More than likely, yeah. If you don't like church, if you don't like it, right? Uh, see, some people say, well, so I never, ever, ever, ever miss. Well, if you're traveling, God bless you. Let somebody know and make sure your position's filled if you're serving somewhere, of course. You know, I mean, I went out of town. I'm not saying never miss. I missed. Of course, I went to a lot of church while I was gone. But hey, I still miss church, right? And did did my was my position filled? So see, just follow me as I follow Christ, would you? Because see, some people they get in the gutter of that. I never miss. You know, I I was calculating. It it had been at least four years since I missed a Sunday morning. I like being here. I don't like being away. I'm a pastor. I'm called to be here. I love being here. Somebody said, "Well, did you get a?" Were you refreshed on vacation? I said, I'm refreshed standing right here doing what God called me to do. You kidding me? You take seven kids to Florida, you're going to be. I wouldn't say refresh would be the word. I wouldn't call it that. But you know what? We made memories they'll never forget. That's what, that's what my goal and aim was. Praise God. Now, with Cain, I got I to gotta get some traction here. Anger attached him to sin that grew to murder. Get this. So if that happened to Cain, and then in the New Testament, Cain's brought up three times as a warning to you and I, maybe we should make sure we resist anger. Don't let it go unchecked. Get it under the blood. That's why I'm thankful for the blood, aren't you? Another example I want us to look at. Here, let's go. Say it. Let's go. We need to learn from these examples. The Bible's full of examples to learn from. You either learn what to do or what not to do. 1 Samuel 18 is where we're going to go. So go ahead and turn there in your Bible. Let me set this up. Fresh off the defeat of Goliath. You ever heard of David and Goliath? Yeah? yeah. Uh, wave at me for a minute if you've heard of David and Goliath. Yeah, you've heard of Okay. Most people have heard that story. Fresh off 
of David holding up that nasty head, blood dripping everywhere, Philistines running for the hills, Israelites shouting and taking the victory, praise God. Fresh off of that, we find the most interesting story in the Bible that once again is connected to anger. Go to 1 Samuel 18 and say, thank God for the word one more time. 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. Now, here comes off, off of the battlefield. David comes and he's speaking to King Saul. Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. They, they became best friends. They call it BFFs in this time, day and time. But if you're a man, I mean, come on. We don't talk like that. That's what women talk. Verse 2. <laughs> Saul took him that day. And would not let him go home to his father's house anymore, talking about David. He recognized the gift of God and the anointing on David. He said, you're going to stay with me. The king says this. Everything's great up till now. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. Verse 3, 1 Samuel 18 is where I'm reading. Because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him. That, was his, that showed he was the prince, basically, the king's son. And gave it to David with his armor. Even his sword and his, his bow and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him. Look at that. Isn't that interesting? Now he's working for the king. The king said, you defeated Goliath. Come work for me. Of course, he got to marry Saul's daughter. And he behaved wisely, David did. That's, a, that's an interesting piece. Uh, as a Christian, you need to know that part. That should be what your boss says about you. That you go where they send you and you behave wisely. So Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Everything's great. Everything's good to this point. But then verse 6 comes along. <laughs> and you see 1 Samuel 18, 6. Now it happened as they were coming home. When David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing. See, this is why it's important in praise and worship that you sing and you dance, you shout, you do this. The reason I, I tell you to do that is because that shows that you believe you've got victory. They weren't mourning, they were shouting. Why? Victory. Somebody say victory. victory. See, if you've got the victory, and you do according to the word, you say, well, not according to what I see. Well, don't, don't praise according to what you see. That's not faith. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. While that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.